but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Now, here you have to understand, under Islam, under Islam, lying is permitted. You're allowed to uh, to lie to any coffers, meaning uh, uh, <coughs> anyone who's not a Muslim, you're allowed to lie to. It's not, it's not considered a sin. You can lie to any of your wives, okay, especially about each other. Uh, and you can lie to a fellow Muslim if it will avoid a fight. So they're allowed to lie uh, under Islam, and Obama has proven that. Oh, yeah. But under what they call progressive socialism or liberalism, it's mandatory. It's mandatory. If you read the writings of Marx and Lenin, lying is mandatory. It's a, they have to practice lying. And then turn over to Proverbs chapter 1. And in Proverbs chapter 1, starting with verse 20, we read this. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gate, and in the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. You see, this is, this is exactly what I do six days a week on the radio. I keep asking over and over and over, how long are you going to do that? How long are you going to uh, turn away from wisdom and knowledge? See, now wisdom and knowledge you're holding in your hand. Amen. That King James Bible is the greatest source of wisdom and knowledge. Of course, in those days they didn't have the King James Bible, but they had the Word of God, and that's what he's referring to. Yes. And, and how long will you hate knowledge? Ooh. Turn you at my reproof, and behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. He's simply saying, repent of your sin. Repent of your sin. Ask the Lord into your life. Receive Christ as your Savior. And guess what? You'll have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> source of knowledge that ever existed. <laughs> because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but you have said it not all in my counsel and would have none of my reproof. Now do you understand? See, the time is coming again, and we keep telling people this, the time will come when the only thing that will matter to you is your standing with God. That's the only thing. Nothing else will matter to you. Nothing else. You won't be worried about making a house payment. You won't, you won't be worried about uh, what your neighbors are doing. There is nothing that's going to concern every one of us at some point but, but our standing with the Lord. That will be the only thing, the only thing that matters. Amen. Right. And that's happening, guess what? That will happen today. Today, millions of people are going to meet maker. Millions of people today are going to die. Millions will be born, millions are going to die, and the vast majority will die in their sin. And so the, and, and guess what, the vast majority of people throughout the world today have no intention of dying. The vast majority will plan on being here tomorrow. But just see, God doesn't promise any of us another tomorrow, does he? He doesn't promise any of us five more minutes from now. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. And when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. 
that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearketh unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Folks, how often do I hear people say, you know, Pastor, uh, we need to know, we, we, we don't need to know any more about what the devil's doing. Everybody can see what the devil's doing all around. We need to know what God's doing. Well, you see, when professing Christians say that to me, we need to know what God's doing. My answer is, you are supposed to be a Christian. And what God is doing, he's supposed to be doing through you. So if you don't know what he's doing, then there's a real problem here. Right? Right. Yes. And so, here, you need to warn people. The Bible says, if we warn the wicked, and they continue in their sin, their blood is on them. What if we fail? See, that's called a sin of omission. And you see, this is what preachers are supposed to preach. Preachers are supposed to preach what the Word of God gives them to preach and not what they want to. Rick Warren said he had to use 14 different Bibles in his book to say what he wanted to say. The problem with that, he was supposed to say what God wanted to say. Amen. You see? And that's what preachers are supposed to do. Men that are called of God and sent of God will preach the gospel. Yes, right? Sir. Well, turn over to Psalms 97. In, in Psalms 97, verses 9 through 12, we read this. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth, thou art exalted far above all gods. Yet thou loveth the Lord, ye that loveth the Lord, hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteousness, and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. Listen, if you love God, you're going to hate evil. If you love God, you'll hate evil. Amen. Listen, That's right. hate and tolerating are not one of the same. Why? Hate and tolerating are not one of the same. You hear people say, well, I don't much care for it. I guess I just have to tolerate it. No. You see, you are supposed to refuse it, you are supposed to rebuke it, you're supposed to reprove it. Right. And so when somebody says evil things, you have a duty, if you call yourself a Christian, to refute them. Right. Amen. To rebuke them. Sure. And if you remain silent when you should speak up, you have just sinned. Right. Yeah. It's called the sin of omission. Turn over to... Romans chapter 9. How often will you hear people say, well, God loves everybody. No, you don't. I mean, you hear this all the time. You hear this saying. No, the Bible doesn't teach that. In fact, the Bible tells you about a whole lot of things that God doesn't love. Because He hates, God hates those that commit iniquity. The Bible says God hates all those that love violence. Yep. Now listen. Being hated by God is not a good thing. No, no. So if you go to Romans chapter 9, I want you to read verse 13. And we read this. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now, in several places in Scripture, uh, he talks about uh, hating the things of Esau, hating the ways of Esau. And in two places, he talks about hating Esau. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Mm -hmm. For he has said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Amen. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but the God that showeth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that thy name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will, and have mercy, and whom he will, he hardened now.
God is, is always, uh, He will always honor your commitment. He's always true. But God will sometimes allow His people to be tested. Right. Yep. Uh, but God will never leave you. He will never leave you. Right. And He will always give you the strength to overcome the wicked one. Amen. In fact, uh, turn over to Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, I want to read you verses 1 through 7. And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, say he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know that works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how that canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say that they are apostles, and are not, and have found them liars. And thou hast borne, and has had patience, and for thy name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which also I hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what... The Spirit said then to the churches, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise of God. Now, here, the, the Nicolaitans, the word Nicolaitans means uh, to, means overcomers of the people, or power, or means to have power over the laity. And today you see that with clericalism. Uh, you, you will see that often uh, where uh, people will elevate themselves. You have clergy who allow people to kiss the rings yes. uh, and, and bow down to them and call them your holiness. Uh, and and uh, some of these, these churches out there, uh, they call the, the pastor the most reverend, okay? The most reverend, okay? And uh, some of, yeah, that is. And also, uh, they call the the wives of the pastors, the first ladies. Ain't no first uh, folks, uh, if you elevate yourself, God will bring you down. That's right. right. If you humble yourself, God will raise you up. That's right. Amen. By the way, I guess Repro Dollar got his $47 million jet plane. Oh, he right. had to have it. His people had to help you with it. It's an amazing thing out there today. <laughs> So they could watch him play. And then turn to Proverbs 6. I'm going to have to stop here because we have a very long day. Proverbs 6, verse 16 through 18. Six things does the Lord hate. Yes, seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart devises wicked imaginations, and feet that be swift running to mischief. And a false witness to speak his lies, and he that soweth his card, his court among the brethren. Well, all you have to do is see one of these uh, street demonstrations out there today, and you've just seen all of that. And the, this thing about the Black Lives Matter and, and uh, whatever, you've seen all of that out there, uh, the ungodly in front of the abortion bills, when they come out to counter-protest us, you've seen all of that there. Well, we've been coming to you today from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio. <coughs> Zip is 44065. I'm Pastor Ernie Sanders. And... Uh, You've been listening to us on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That's 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. And until next week, we want to say good morning. God bless. And remember, always, always, keep fighting the fight.